الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي انت الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي غالي اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين أما بعد Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى says in the Holy Quran in سورة الانشقاق يا أيها الإنسان O human being here when Allah says يا أيها الإنسان it does not relate to any particular human being. Everyone who has the qualities of a human being is addressed in this verse. Ya ayyuhal insan, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan. Surely you are struggling to your Lord laboriously famulaqih and you shall meet him. Implying that every human being innately aspires to be Allah to be like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to travel to the proximity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to manifest the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah is all knowledgeable, the human being also would like to acquire knowledge but to its infinity. If the human, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all beautiful and that is infinitely beautiful, having no deficiency whatsoever, the human being also innately aspires to be all beautiful, infinitely beautiful. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful, the human being innately aspires to be all powerful. And so many ad other attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has ingrained these propensities in the human being. He has made the human being in such a way that the human being naturally aspires for these qualities. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not tell about the reality of the believer, for example. He doesn't say, Ya ayyuhal mu'min, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan, or Ya ayyuhal muttaqi, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan. But he says, Ya ayyuhal insan, that is even a kafir or a munafiq or a person who doesn't believe in God, an atheist, naturally aspires for infinite knowledge, infinite power, infinite beauty, eternal life. And all these qualities in reality are the reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the infinite God who has all these perfections. So in reality, every human being aspires for these perfections. But he does not know what path to undertake in order to reach these perfections. It is, he is duty bound to think about it, to go for the right religion, to go for the right creed, and to go for the right path that would lead him to this proximity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he does not go for the right path, and if he does not search for the right path, then he would linger and go to the different paths and would not reach anywhere. But if you go and see in reality, his struggle would continue and would never stop. The subject that I have undertaken today is to make us understand how powerful and how important the opportunity of the holy month of Ramadan is. The holy month of Ramadan is an opportunity that recurs every year. If a person understands the sanctity and the power of the holy month of Ramadan, he can really change his life and he can pursue the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid forward for him. And that is the path to his proximity and nearness, the path towards the embellishment with the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the path to qurb ilahi that many people speak about, that proximity of Allah, that power of having the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but up to a certain limit. 
if a person would like to go through this path, the holy month of Ramadan is the best opportunity a person can ever have. Obviously, even before the holy month of Ramadan, the months of uh, the holy month of Rajab and the holy month of Shaaban are also very important. They, in reality, are preparatory months for the holy month of Ramadan. If a person prepares himself from the holy month of Rajab and seeks Allah's forgiveness and struggles to purify himself, when he comes in the holy month of Ramadan, he is pure from the inside. He understands things, he understands things which other people do not understand and cannot comprehend. So the human being has got this opportunity. The holy month of Ramadan specifically is a very powerful opportunity because of the program that the holy month of Ramadan carries and the spirituality it carries, the days, the nights. Every day is important, every night is important. Every moment of the holy month of Ramadan is extremely important. In that very beautiful khutbah of the Holy Prophet that is known as Khutbah Sha'baniya. The Holy Prophet clearly says that Ayyamhu Afdalul Ayyam wa layalihi Afdalul Layali. Its days are the best of days and its nights are the best of nights. All this is to make us understand that, you know, if we value the opportunity and use this opportunity in the right way, then we can reach very high stations. One of the very important things that we are told to engage in, especially in this holy month of Ramadan, is dua, and that is supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially we are told that dua recited after the as-salawat al-maktuba, that is the five daily prayers, after salatul subh, after salatul dhuhr, asr, maghrib and isha, after these prayers, if a person supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does dua, then his dua is accepted. Obviously, there may be some hurdles that he has created himself. That is why the dua is not accepted. But otherwise, these are the best of the times a person can ever do dua. A very important thing that we must understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly informed us what are the principal and fundamental characteristics or conditions of a dua. In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'uni astajib lakum. A very short phrase, a very short sentence, but full of meaning. Great scholars like Allama Tabatabai in Al-Mizan and other scholars have tried to explain this beautiful words properly and has have looked at the um, esoteric meaning of the words and have expounded it very well. For example, in this verse we get very important information to know what kind of dua is accepted. Allah first says, Ud'uni. First of all, Ud'u means call. That means really your dua should be a dua. It should not be something that is a vocalization, just a pronunciation. Sometimes, you know, a person is reciting dua kumail, the other duas. It's a vocalization. There is nothing like a sincere expression of what a person has within himself. So this is not a dua. This is a vocalization. You are told, ud'u, number one. And then Allah said, ud'u ni. A very important condition for the acceptance of dua is that you call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't call other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't anticipate anything from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, that would be as if you are trying to take two gods. It's, it's, it's a phenomenon of shirk because you anticipate from one person and you anticipate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, Allah says, Ud'u, number one, Ud'u ni and Number two is that call me astajib lakum and I will respond to you. Obviously, the great saints and the men of insight have given a subtler interpretation of this verse. And that is, you know, when you do dua do, or when you call, when you call somebody, 
Why do you call somebody? Sometimes <coughs> you call somebody because of somebody else or because of a need that you have. But sometimes you call somebody because of himself. When you call the beloved, you call the beloved because of the beloved. You don't call the beloved because of the needs that you have. And therefore, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'uni, that means call me, ask for me, ask for my proximity, call me for myself. Don't call me so that I fulfill your needs only. Not because of that. The most important end should be myself. Ud'uni, astajib lakum. So if a person really, sincerely, number one, calls Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and number two, calls only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and number three calls Allah for the sake of Allah and not for these whims and desires then astajib lakum I am going to respond to your call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and therefore it's very important to know that dua is one of the things that uh, is very much encouraged in this holy month of Ramadan. You will find that our Aimma alayhi salam have narrated so many du'as, have recited different kinds of du'as, which really, in no religion, can we find such sublime du'as the way we find in the religion of Islam. You look at each and every du'a. For example, when we look at du'a al-Sahar in the holy month of Ramadan, we start so beautifully. We say, Allahumma inni as'aluka min baha'ika bi abha wa kullu baha'ika bahi. So beautiful. Say, Allahumma, O oh Allah, inni, surely I as'aluka, I ask you, min baha'ika, of that apparent effulgence, min baha'ika bi abhahu, that effulgence which is the most effulgent, now look at the human being. The human being does not ask for petty things. When he starts his supplication, he says, Oh Allah, I want that effulgence of yours, which is the most effulgent. And every effulgence of yours is effulgent. Allahumma inni as'aluka bi baha'ika kulli. Oh Allah, we ask you for your effulgence in its totality. So from here you come to realize that you are you are not asking for, for, for example, a certain kind of woman in paradise. You are not asking for fruits in paradise. You are not asking for houses in paradise. You are asking for the manifestation of the attribute of effulgence. And that is why the late Allama at tabatabai would ask or would uh, request and suggest to his students that you recite Dua al-Sahar of the holy month of Ramadan because there is no mention of paradisal women and men and for example pears and bananas and the fruits of heaven and so on. Any everything is Allah Allah. Allahumma inni as'aluka min jamalika bi ajmalihi wa kullu jamalika jameel. Oh, oh Allah, I ask you of that beauty of yours which is the most beautiful. وَكُلُّ جَمَالِكَ جَمِيلٌ And every beauty of yours is the most beautiful. Allahumma inni as'aluka bi jamalika kulli. Oh Allah, I ask you by your beauty in its totality. So from here you come to know that the human being is not a small person. He is not only an animal. He doesn't only have a plant life or a vegetable life and an animal life. He has a life that is even loftier than that. He aspires to be in the proximity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He aspires to have the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the kind of dua that is taught by Imam Muhammad al-Baqir alayhi salam to the Muslims who fast. And especially this is a dua that is to be recited just before the subh prayers at the time of the Sahar time, which is just before the uh, Salatul Fajr. And this is something which is very beautiful. All of us should try to make it a point to recite this dua. This is one of the duas, a very beautiful dua that we recite is dua al iftitah. Allahumma inni aftatihu thana'a bihamdik wa anta musaddidun li sawabi bimannik wa ayqantu annaka anta arhamur rahimin fi mawdi al afwi wal rahma. You look at these du'as and try to ponder over that. 
them. You'll find that the holy month of Ramadan is so spiritual because of these du'as. The way you try to address Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you try to solve your problems. A very important concept about du'a that uh, can be gotten from the riwayat as well as the speeches of great scholars is that when you do du'a, du'a for anything, for example, should be aimed for the sake of the hereafter in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, you have a problem of um, a house, you know, you don't have a house and you say, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make it easy for me to live. Or you have a problem, you are sick and you want uh, a cure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, oh Allah, solve this problem for me. Now this is very good. But if you want Allah to solve your problem so that you can enjoy the worldly life and get attached more to the worldly life, then this is something which is reprehensible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like this. And therefore, whenever our du'as are recited or whenever we ask anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our aim should be for the sake of the hereafter, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one of the very important elements of the holy month of Ramadan and this is where uh, the opportunity of the holy month of Ramadan can be utilized it is in dua inshallah in our next session we will look at other important things that we can do in this holy month of Ramadan so that we can travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enjoy his proximity walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al -tahirin. انت الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي انت الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي غالي 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 يا ابو السجاد حبك غالي غالي يا ابو السجاد حبك غالي العشق قال ومرأ